Okay, we are here with Susan Brody, and it is such an honor to uh, and a pleasure to have you here. Good morning. Good morning, and good afternoon in New York, where I am. It's, it's still morning, but thank you for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure. You were just giving me a thumbnail sketch of the, the weather there. Interesting in Sedona. Yes, yeah, we live in um, high desert, so we get four seasons. So yesterday we had a snowstorm, and I was saying today it's sunny <laughs> and beautiful with all the snow frozen on all the trees and everything, so it's quite picturesque here. We don't suffer. <laughs> nice. So let's introduce ourselves to you and to the listeners, anybody who's just tuning in. I'm Sean McLaughlin. Dr. Ray Working. Dave Liebig. Ulysses Dermis. And we have our buddy Ryan Smith. Yes, hello. <laughs> all of us are here. So we're excited about this film. It looks like a great film, and thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. It's a very powerful film. Uh, Bully to Silence is a documentary that will be released early 2012. And basically what we are doing that no other documentary is doing is we are focusing exclusively on words, how hateful, hurtful words and cyberbullying really uh, are killing. Uh, we have youth throughout the world not just in our country, but throughout the world, who have taken their lives as a result of the words that have been directed toward them. I, I've never, and before we move on, I have to punch up your credentials, because you have what I always like to refer to as a blue chip curriculum vita, and uh, you, know, there, you have no small series of accomplishments here. You're an award-winning filmmaker, author, publisher, and also, the, your award-winning film, Let It Begin, The Filmmaker's Journey, was considered for the 2011 Student Documentary Academy Award. And that may be verbiage for the average person, but that, that's quite a, an accomplishment. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I have to actually mention that our director, Tammy Pivnik, um, was the director on that film as well. I was the producer on that film, and it was through Tammy's um, vision to go back to film school and to really take this on as a career uh, to extend our company, Purple People, um, into filmmaking and to allow our message to get out there through another medium besides the uh, books that I was writing. So thank you for mentioning that. No, it was my pleasure. I love your, your title. <laughs> Whoever comes up with your, your, your graphic uh, arts and your titles uh, reminds me of someone I spent 22 years with. Dog Eats Hat Production slash Purple People Incorporated. <laughs> Okay. It does not get any better than that. Do you want the background on that? I surely do. Okay, well, Purple People is a company that I started up um, about 12, 13 years ago. We promote equality amongst all humans, respect, on, uh, respect for all living creatures. And Dog Eats Hat came because when Tammy edits, and Tammy's the editor um, on Bully to Silence as well as the director, when she was editing um, Let It Begin, A Filmmaker's Journey, we had her hat, which was like a baseball cap, sitting on the counter next to her, and our dog at the time ate the, the rim of the hat, hence the production company named Dog Eats Hat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of the best anecdotes I've ever heard. Yeah. Um, when I went over, and I, I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't actually get the print out of this because of my lack of technological uh, savvy uh, until this morning, and I, I've just been, you know, taking ownership of it. You're, this should, is a program that should be required reading everywhere in this country. Words kill, be the change, no more bully to silence. This portrays all the horrific things that has happened. It allows people to tell their stories but you do so much more, and we're going to go over the four parts of this. But this is not a downbeat uh, piece at all. It's a call to action. Yes, absolutely. Um, we did want to come out with the film, and the reason why we came to the conclusion to do this film to begin with is because bullying is such an important uh, doc, uh, topic worldwide, not just within our country, but worldwide. Um, while we were doing the production on the other film, we were seeing so many youth take their lives that we just felt that we could not stand by and not do something about it. But one of the things as documentarians that we have discovered is it's wonderful to go sit in a movie theater, enjoy yourself, or take the topic on in that moment, in that 90 minutes, in that period of time. And then you get up from the theater, you leave, and although you have every great intention of going forward with doing something positive, it just doesn't happen. 
So in approaching this topic of bullying, what we felt very strongly about with this film is that this film didn't need to be just a film where you sat down in the seat, got comfortable, ate your popcorn, said, oh my God, look at the kids who have taken their lives. And in our film, you'll also see a very inspirational message of those who have overcome the challenge of the bullying that they've um, withstood and gone to do great things. But then you stand up and you leave, and what we wanted was you took something and you did something in that moment. So what we are doing is we are saying that this film is actually more than just a film. It's more than a feature documentary. It's really a movement. So while in your seat, you can make the decision. You can, you can join us and say, I will be the change. Uh, we're basically quoting Gandhi, who said, be the change we wish to see in the world. And so we are saying, be the change. Each one of us can be the change. We can be the change by changing the language that we use toward each other. We can change the language of others when we hear it and not accept it. We can change cyberbullying by even things such as Facebook. And some of my friends will tell you that sometimes they wish they weren't my friends on Facebook because <laughs> I will call them on it. Like, excuse me, when did you just say I don't care if that person's your friend? We don't use that language because we never know how it's impacting the person. And so that's what our, our goal was with this film and with this movement, is basically to change the face of bullying through the language that we each use. I want to move on to, to or go back to that in a second, but the word movement jumps right off the, the literature here, and the Gandhi quote is, is priceless. I mean, I, one of my mantras, is a number of them are Gandhi quotes, be the change you wish to see in the world. And together we, we can be a... Uh, provide the bully, bullied a powerful voice. We, we can provide this. We can embrace our children for who they are and empower them, love that word, to believe in themselves. And together, we can be the village that supports the development of happy and healthy youth who themselves can be the change. This could be, again, this could, this could be empty words, but it's the antithesis of that. You, you take these words and... I've always said to Ulysses, I hate the, word, the phrase mission statement, but if there were a mission statement, this would probably be it. Only yours is alive and living and not dead in some cemetery. Yes, and it was actually born from the fact that many of the youth who have been bullied are in fact, unfortunately, in cemeteries. And so we want to make a positive from the, the negative and turn it into something that we can all do, overcome the challenge and be inspirational in providing a change, be action-oriented. Well, you, you do something, you achieve a dichotomy that I think is very hard to do in this. It's a dark topic, kids taking their own lives, but it's one that has to be dealt with. And But you find a way, the other half of the dichotomy, to make it positive because of all the things that you, you know, have been discussing. But let's go back to this discussion we had about uh, words. Uh, the N-word was in the, the trailer, and I know you were having an off off air conversation with, with Sean, and you were glad you know that it was actually there, and you it, for reasons that I want to talk about. Uh, we talked about how <laughs> words that used to destroy us as kids now we will use in a kidding manner, in a lighthearted manner with ourselves. And I mentioned Queer Spirit Camp uh, being so popular, and that some kids involved with that don't like the term queer spirit camp, and you mentioned the N-word being okay among African Americans, among themselves, even though this would never be the case outside of the inner circle. So, so speak to that if you would, Susan. Well, I don't think it's ever okay for any of us to denigrate any other person, whether we're in the class of individuals or not. Um, well, let me uh, just interrupt you if you don't mind. You're sounding a little bit sort of staticky, and I don't know if you're near a speaker or something like that, but if you are... Just... A phone, but yeah, I'm hearing that too. Okay. I okay, think, I think it's cleared up. I think, yeah, it was just kind of sounding weird, but I think you sound better. Okay. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> uh, no, no worries. Um, so the issue is that even if we are part of the LGBT group, and we are referring to a friend of ours who is also part of the LGBT group, and we say, you know what, that's queer, you're queer, you're a fag, um, you're a dyke, whatever, it's not acceptable. And what happens is, as we allow ourselves to use language toward each other in these manners that are unloving and are hateful, you never know how it's, how it's being impactful of the other person who is hearing it. What is it doing to them? What is it doing to their psyche? Um, you know, frequently amongst friends, we'll call each other a bitch. Um, and that is something that we do in a situation in which we think, oh, we're friends, that's okay. In the situation in the trailer with the um, woman, uh, Bridget Pettis, who is 
uh, just recently retired WNBA coach of uh, the Phoenix uh, Mercury um, basketball team, she was called nigger. And she refers to it. And her statements in the film, she's a very powerful person who's involved with the film. And one of the things that we've discussed since is amongst the African-American population, you know, you may find youth and or others calling each other that word because they feel it's okay and acceptable. But the reality is it really is not acceptable. And that's part of our whole mission statement. Well, actually, it's not a mission statement. You put that on my brain now. It's, it's part of our, <laughs> our uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, it's, it's part of our entire purpose to change that so that we all think before we speak. Because as we speak the words, we never know how they're being you know, received by the other. And so it's just something we need to all really start thinking about and start feeling. I, I can remember as a first year teacher, uh, someone saying everybody, every male teacher will have, and probably most of the female, will have a, in a book cup that's issued to them, a textbook, in the front it will say X, whoever person, is a fag or faggot, or you'll find it on the bathroom wall sometime. With me, since I was not out, in school and couldn't be at that point in 1970 and 71, my blood ran cold at the thought that my name would be linked with that because it would out me. So I, I don't think there's anything more terrifying as an, as an adult, at, you know, 21, 22, or as a kid, than to, to have those words thrown at you. And when, when I read this, I thought you've really tapped into the psyche that I felt. It was terror, it was hurt, it was pain. And you really embrace that and explore it, Susan. Yes, absolutely. And it's beyond the hurt, the pain. It's, it's humiliation. It's denigration. And it's a loneliness. The youth that we have talked to around the country and around the world speak of such a loneliness. They feel in part that they're the only person to whom this is happening. And once they get to that deep, dark hole, they feel that there's no point of return. There's nobody there for them. Um, there, you know, I have dozens of cases of youth who are both in the film and thankfully healthy and thriving right now and doing great things in their lives. And I also have those who are in the film who are no longer here, and so the film gives them a voice. And one of the things that we find is that they say that they, for example, Jamie Rodemeyer from New York spoke of, you know, okay, it's getting better. But for him, it really never did get better. In fact, he did, in fact, take his life in September of 2011. So what we really have to do is we really have to say to ourselves, what is it that we're, we're doing when we're saying you're so gay, faggot, sissy, ugly, fat, slut, you know, just go kill yourself. And there have been cases where um, people have been told, just go kill yourself. And they're at such a deep point of feeling despair and loneliness that they, in fact, do. Oh, my God. So sad. Wow. Um, we, we have an agreement that I mentioned earlier that I, we're not going to look at research that's available, but I, I can, you, you said you can say generically that there is research out there of significance that in this film will blow the roof off. Well, absolutely. What we have that has been disclosed to us and has not been disclosed to any other um, documentary or film is 2011 research by a um, very known and renowned uh, professor, medical doctor, and researcher from um, a Northeast Ivy League institution whereby he states um, in his research through MRI studies that changes to the brain actually occur and emotional toxicity actually occurs to the youth from exposure to ridicule and humiliation from both parents and peers. So it's equal that what actually happens to us as youth who are hearing these words, words only, nothing physical, just words, is that we are actually feeling the brain of the child, the youth, is actually being impacted as if they are being sexually abused. The same impact. Take a moment and take that in. The same impact this youth feels as having been sexually abused by a non-family member, just from being called names. Well, I you say when you say take a while, my word would be process. I mean, I will be thinking about that for days because there's objective proof of what occurs as a result of words hurting. I mean, they damn well do hurt and kill. Yeah. And we actually have a, a, a song on deck. And uh, Susan, if you'll stand by on the other side, we're going to talk about some stories and Caleb Lasky and other exciting things. Right here on the Upstate Underground, WRPI 91.5 FM. 
Our number here in the station is 518-276-6248 if you'd like to reach us. And we are talking with Susan Brody, who is the producer and writer of a feature film documentary that's coming out early next year entitled Bullied to Silence. And boy, if you aren't interested today, you never will be. Yeah. Whoa, that MRI stuff just says, I, I, I'm trying to put it together, but Susan, I, I am so impressed. Um, well, it will all be in the film. We'll be disclosing who the person is, the university he's affiliated with, and all of that. And um, it will really blow people's minds away because it's not just a premise that words hurt and that words kill. Um, it's not true that six and seven may break my bones and words, you know, will never hurt me. Words, in fact, do hurt, and now we have the scientific proof to show it. Well, off the air, we were discussing the, the, the parental role. The parents really need to be tuned in and aware. Can you speak to that for me? Yes, absolutely. A lot of what's happening across our country, and we'll speak to that in a moment, is the fact that we keep really focusing on the schools and how we can change schools and make them safe for our students, which we do need to do. And we also need to have parents, all of us, take responsibility, again, be the change, so that we understand that we as parents need to support our youth. We need to do this in a number of ways. First of all, we need to be watching for the signs if our child is being bullied. We need to, if our child discloses or we, dis we find out that the child is being bullied, we need to be supportive. Get the child help in a loving way, not say, pull up your bootstraps, this too shall pass. We actually have had children take their lives because a parent has said, you know, this too shall pass, pull up your bootstraps, no big deal, yeah. you know, let it roll off your back, poo-pooing it. We need to validate it. I, not was, I was shocked actually one time when I actually heard a parent of a, a kid in that situation actually say, grow a pair. Yeah. And I was thinking, grow a pair, really? You're the parent, mm -hmm. you're going to say that to your son who's dealing with you know, verbal hell at school, and you're going to just say, grow up here? Absolutely, and this is the thing. We need to understand that we need to validate and support our children and get them help. And the help may be you being supportive as a parent. It also may be that the child needs to go into some other, you know, more involved help of psychological, you know, discussions or some peer groups things, but that we need to not just feel that it's non-existent. The other thing is we have parents who actually bully. And they do or don't necessarily understand it. And it happens on many different levels. First of all, we have parents at a dinner table who will be talking to, to Susie and say, Susie, your friend Mary, my gosh, she's such a dyke. Look at how she dresses. What message is that sending to Susie? Is that allowing Susie to become the bully so that Susie goes to school and calls Mary and everybody else a dyke? Is it sending the message to Susie that if Susie identifies as a lesbian, that she is something wrong with her because her own parent refers to her as a dyke? You know, this is the issue. It starts at the dinner table. The other thing is, if in fact we are identifying ourselves as an LGBT youth to our family, and our family is saying things such as, if I wanted a sissy, I would have had a daughter. And they're saying this to their male child who identifies as gay. If my church accepted you, I would have to change churches because we, as whatever religion we are, do not accept LGBT. What message are you sending to your child? We actually have somebody involved in the film who tells us a story of a person who's no longer with us. And what was being told to this child as he grew up and, and came out to his family in the last few years of his life? If you want to have that lifestyle, if you are choosing a gay lifestyle, choosing, we are using the word choice to this child, Hello. you should live with Jesus. Well, my message and the way that I'm understanding that message to that child is, if you're going to live with Jesus, you're not going to be alive. And I'm sad to say, sitting here today, this child is not alive. Wow. I, I love the way you call people out on this because it has to be done. I mean, absolutely. Again, be the change. You know, absolutely. If we are not calling each and every person out on this, whoever they are, we are not going to allow youth and others to survive bullying. We are actually saying to people, it's okay. I'll look the other way. And, you know, so get over it. No, it's not okay. It absolutely is not. And the other thing is, one of the things we were talking about earlier is we have so many youth in this country and world who are being bullied with anti-gay slurs, whether or not they're LGBT or whether they're perceived as LGBT. And so still the words are, are very hurtful. 
What distresses me is that as a producer of this film and with the people we've spoken to around the country and the world over the past year of doing this film, it's so distressful to me that what is so hurtful, whether or not you're gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, that's not the point, is that the word faggot and the energy with, it, with which it is used is so powerful and so hurtful, or you're so gay, or dyke, or any of these other anti-gay slurs, regardless of whether you identify or you're perceived to be, are so hurtful. And you know why? It's not a bad word. And when we've asked the youth who have these words directed to them, why being called gay is so hurtful, is they say it's not the word gay, it's the energy behind it. Well, you are spot on with that one. I mean, with, working with the Gay Straight Alliance kids, this comes up again and again in terms of teachers. I, I have one anecdote where the teacher says, just, just go away, you know, where I don't, I don't want to hear about it. The, it, the, the indefinite pronoun, which I always never allowed in my classroom, um, referring to the fact that this child is an LGBT kid. Uh, I have to be quiet about it. I have to do this, but just, just don't mention it in my, my presence. As you said, what kind of a message, what kind of a verbal cue is that? It negates the being of the very child. Absolutely. You know, it's the same thing, and we have this covered in the film. You know, you're fat, you're slut, you're ugly, you're not talented. Um, and when we say that to our youth, whether we're the peer, whether we're the teacher, whether we're the parent, we are saying the message, you are not good enough. And U Ulysses is with us, and I'd love to hear his thoughts, because I have, I'll be criticized again for retelling of you're the first person on this show and the one who said it the most. You called kids out in the locker room as a Christian brother and said it was wrong. Well, I just did what I thought was appropriate. If, if we, you know, working in a, in a Catholic school environment, if I wasn't going to call them out then, then um, where we profess to, uh, to treat everybody equally, then, you know, we, were, we weren't, they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing in terms of treat, treating the other kids equally, so... Um, as an adult, um, and as someone that, that I knew was acting as a role model, I felt I needed to, to step up and say something. Uh, I admire you forever for that, but Susan, it's, that exemplifies for me what you do and what has to be done. Call them out. I'd love, I'd love us all to have t-shirts, be the change. To me, that's the heart of this whole thing. Is They're the episode. coming. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thank you for that. I, I love that. Thank you. They are coming. We will have them. They'll be available on our website at www.bullytosilence.com. And thank you so much, because I didn't even prompt you to do that. <laughs> no, like, great minds think alike, I guess. Well, I, I, I love this lady already, and I'm yeah. looking on for pull, pull, pull me down for five. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. And after we'll talk about sizes but yes absolutely they're going to be available size matters, it's going to be so. the style to be the change and um and they'll be available in both black with white lettering because that's tammy our producer and she's a wonderful um graphics person she's designed them that way and then they'll also be available in purple because of course purple people so yes thank you <laughs> absolutely well on that upbeat note we're going to have a song that describes something that uh Right here on 91.5 FM, WRPI, Troy. And we are chatting with Susan Brody, who is the writer and producer of a, a brand new documentary, which will appear entitled Bully to Silence, right after the first of the year. Susan, I, I'm into this so deeply now, <laughs> it's hard to even know where to, where to proceed. Um, I want to mention cutting before we go on, because so many people have said to me you know, every week when it's brought up, what, what are you talking about? There are adults who don't have a clue as to what cutting is and what, the, what it means. Uh, do you want to speak to that? Yes, absolutely. You know something? I'm absolutely convinced that you're reading my mind. Because what I wanted to um, speak to you about is in, in hearing Debbie Lovato and in Skyscraper, um, we have so many people who have written anti-bullying songs um, who are part of this film, The Youth. And we have so many of them who have gone to do such incredibly inspirational things. So um, I want to mention some of their names, and I'm hopeful I won't forget any of them. Um, and if I do, I know they'll apologize and not call me today and yell at me. <laughs> but, um, and I also want to start off by saying Lady Gaga. Um, Debbie Lovato has been very inspirational, but Lady Gaga, Gaga has done so much with her Born This Way song. And we have letters from youth who have said they 
but for the fact that they heard her words and that they took those words into her soul and into their spirit, would have not been here. They would have taken their lives. So she has been so inspirational. Um, and I do want to mention a contest we are running in a little bit. But back to the music. The music is such a part of this film that we have done. We have a lot of youth, as I've said, done um, original music for the film, have done anti-bullying. Um, I want to start with Adam Smith, who's done a song, and the proceeds of that go to Teen Lifeline, which is a pure heartline, um, so that's amazing. Um, we have um, Dalton Laterney is involved with the music, and he's involved with the film, and he was bullied. We have the Veo Twins from Maine. Um, they also did incredible songs. Uh, Kristen, they're two twins, Kristen and Catherine. Kristen has done some beautiful songwriting, has written some songs exclusively for the film that you will hear in the trailer. Kristen's song is in the background of the trailer at one point. And I'm leading into this because of the whole topic of, of the cutting you're mentioning, but with Haley Reardon, who's from Northeast, Linda Rose, um, also involved with music for the film. These are all youth. Um, who are either bullied or on the anti-bullying message of doing songs as a part of how they overcame the bullying, or that they're bystanders. Um, we have um, Michael and Marissa, the band Michael and Marissa, who have toured with and opened for um, Grace and Chance. Uh, they're wonderful. They've just come out with a new song, and they've done several um, anti-bullying bystander songs, such as The Same, um, like over... 30, 40,000 hits on YouTube, and it's out on CD. Um, I'm hoping I'm Amanda McCarthy. And I definitely want to also mention um, Brett Lowenstern, who is a top 24 American Idol, who did tell his story bravely on American Idol in front of millions of people. But when he came and his dad approached us and me as the producer to be in the film, I said to him, I do not want a sound bite. I will not accept it. And we worked with them for months. And Brett does such a gorgeous interview, and he's so heartfelt. And so speaking of getting into the emotion of what happens when you're bullied, what does it take for you to speak out or scream out? And one of the things that's happening in this country and in our world is that youth are turning to cutting. The phrase that's used by other youth toward these youth is emo. What it means is you're emotional. Your emotions can be you cry in front of people when you're bullied, you're just emotional in general, but also it means you're a cutter. And so you are literally taking and you are marring your body to scream out for um, the issue of, I need help. And so it's a horrible situation. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. And I need to say on top of everything with our music, we have an amazing um, executive producer of music and our composer who's doing incredible original music, Susie Shoemaker. Um, she's toured with the Indigo Girls and others. And she, uh, just when you people hear this film, hear it, just the level of the music, the words that are in it, uh, the power behind just the music alone is life-changing. Um, so I want to thank all the people involved with that. Hope I didn't leave anyone else, but Susie, um, as our composer and as our executive um, producer of music, is just beyond amazing. Has been working herself to the bone to, to be meeting deadlines, and she's a very, very incredible person. We're very blessed to have some incredible, wonderful people involved with the film. You certainly are. What a, a cast and crew, all the people who have been involved, all the people who have you know, told their stories, shared their experiences, not only the music, but in, in being involved with the film. It's absolutely fantastic. For anybody just tuning in, we're talking with Susan Brody. She's the writer and producer of the document, documentary Bullied to Silence. And if you'd like more information about the film, it's online at bulliedtosilence.com. And that truly was a who's who, and we're up yeah, against Yeah, lots, lots of shout-outs there, absolutely. lots of love to everybody involved. I, I, I want to get back to the fact that you... You put together a positive focus for this. It's not a uh, uh, you know, dwelling on the tragedies, and God knows there, you offer the opportunity for people who have been bullied uh, to tell their stories, and you tell their stories, but you also push us forward to the triumphs and opportunities, as the press release says, that result from joining forces and creative, creating positive action. Music is the message, as you just said. I mean, how could you miss it with those performers? 
And, and that's wonderful. Uh, I'm looking here at Caleb Lieski, who's been on the show, and uh, he actually was responsible for connecting me with, with you, and he was recently the Youth Grand Marshal in the uh, Palm Springs Gay Pride Parade. And he also is featured in your, your story, your documentary. Yes, Caleb is. And we do bring an inspirational um, message to the film with what has happened to people and how they go forward. So in Caleb's case, as in several others, um, such as Mayor Castro and a few of our other youth who have been incredibly bullied, um, they have gone on to become activists. And it's incredible that they are taking their time and their energy to make a change. In Caleb's case, he has been on the national scene in D.C. with trying to change and affect uh, the national law um, for anti-bullying. Uh, on a local Arizona scene, we've had Mayor Castro, who's gotten involved with Arizona schools, with making the change there. They have, since all of the things that have been going on, they have implemented on the school level through the education board in Arizona. We don't have a state um, law in Arizona yet uh, for anti-bullying. But they've made a change um, whereby bullying is, in fact, you know, they've got their new rules and the new policies. The problem is, and the challenge that still remains, is that we still do not have language either nationally and or in most states whereby it's specific to LGBT or perceived LGBT youth. And that brings up another whole issue um, as well. Um, parts of the other way that the film is inspirational is we have Blake. Um, Gaylord from California, a national award-winning um, dancer who has been horrifically cyberbullied by others in her dance studio. And she's been called horrible names, everything from slut, whore, dyke, um, you know, farting white whale, all kinds of just things out of jealousy because this, this youth is so incredibly talented as a dancer. So she's involved with the film. Um, we will see her in the film. And we will have many of these youth um, who we're mentioning now touring with the film so that after the film there will be a discussion and a roundtable so that people can speak to them and hear um, as well. Um, I don't want to leave a lot of our people out. We just have incredible numbers of people involved. We have um, Tyler Clemente's cousin is involved with the film, and Jen has gone on to do amazing things with um, organizations such as Garden State Equality, and she right now is trying to spread the message of you know, love and that if we just love our youth, and of course Tyler was gay and identified as gay, um, it was just far too late. Um, you know, so that if we just reach out and love our youth and accept them for who they are, that we can in fact save lives. So she's doing incredible inspirational things. Um, I mentioned Michael and Marissa uh, before they're on tour, and they tour um, all over. I think they're in Disney World currently touring, and they're just, you know, 13 and 14 years old. We're not talking about adults here, and they're very big with the bystander message. Um, and we have others as well. Um, I want to mention we, we also, as part of this program, have um, Michelle Borba, who's an international bullying expert. She's involved with the film. She's become a great friend of ours, and she's on Today Show regularly, CNN regularly. Um, and she'll be um, going on some of the tour with the film as well to be presenting to parents exactly some of the things we're discussing about what parents need to do to make the change. And we, we are just up against the clock here. But I, at the point that I want to close with is that you, you make the statement that you're not, you're not going to wait for people to come and see this film. You're going out into the, you know, the trenches where the action is and using this as a tool to make difference in partnership with organizations and communities across the country. And I love that proactive approach and the fact that you will be on tour with these luminaries and these incredible resources as individuals. And uh, we, we, we will have you back again, you know, when the film is released. And, and uh, I, I just, you know, we could talk for hours and you have recognized so many wonderful people. But Susan, it has been a thrill to have you on, the writer and uh, producer of Bully to Silence, a documentary whose mantra is words kill, be the change, no more bully to silence. And in closing, what would you, uh, tell us how we can get in touch with you because I know a lot of people are going to want to they're going to want to see this trailer oh, firsthand, they are. and they're going to want to learn more about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the trailer may be seen at our web, on our website at www.bullied, B-U-L-L-I-E-D, to T-O, silence, S-I-L-E-N-C-E.com. 
We're also on Facebook under Bully to Silence. Um, our um, main website is purplepeople.com. Um, and so those are places where people can find out. You can sign up for our newsletter, which um, we do not have for you. We don't come out with it that often, but we are keeping it posted regularly with where we will be releasing, where we'll be seeing, um, and places where people can see um, more information about the film. We have some amazing releases coming out, some information, some credible VIPs involved with the film that we're going to be announcing very shortly. So that's all available there. And I want to make sure that we mention Tammy Tibnick is our director and our editor. Um, I want to make sure that we don't leave her out of it because obviously um, she's a key part of this team. And you can certainly use funds and there is an opportunity in closing to actually be part of the credits, if I read this correctly, if you uh, reach a certain threshold, we can't talk about amounts of money, but uh, that is an option, right? Good to know. I have to absolutely say how much I love you. Thank you for that. <laughs> yes, we are in post-production now, editing and post-production to make this film look and sound. We'll be coming out with 5.1 Dolby sound. We'll be coming out with feature quality um, color, and it's just going to be a specifically, a, a magnificently beautiful film, sounding great, and that costs money. And so, yes, we're very open to um, donations. They are tax deductible. You can do that on our website at bullydesigns.com or through purplepeople.com. Um, we are also available um, through email at info at purplepeople.com. And um, we appreciate all that we can get. Yes, you can be a part of the film credits based on different um, amounts of money that you are able to donate. We are happy to take any amount of donation from $5 to whatever your no limitless months. funds are. <laughs> Susan, it has been such a pleasure to uh, speak with you today. You're doing uh, God's work, and we certainly salute you. And we will talk to you in the future. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, and we appreciate everybody really taking the message to heart, be the change as you go out in your day. Just please don't use the language and don't allow the language. Uh, Bullyedtosilence.com. Good stuff there. Oh, thank you. <laughs>